Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Rococo Deluxe Edition. This beautiful new, well, deluxified edition from Eagle Griffin Games uh, that includes all of the stuff from the original game. It's the base game, the jewellery box expansion, as well as the festive dresses promo that came with the advent calendar once and uh, a brand new expert tailoring pack and there's a fancy dress pack as well loads and loads of stuff uh, i'm going to be playing the solo game today which is another new addition to the deluxe edition addition to this edition and uh, yeah well you get a good idea of the multiplayer game though i did do a playthrough uh, for two players of the original game and its expansion it's one of the first uh, videos that i ever did so that'll be linked in the description if you'd like to see that uh, but let's get on with this there is a handheld and a static camera uh, sorry static cameras you had to be zoomed out quite away because yeah this is a big board and i'm standing up to do this bit <laughs> but uh, yes there is also the Klingon subtitles. Any mistakes I make will be corrected there. And if you would like to help me keep making playthroughs like this, it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. And you get to vote on videos and see them early and all that stuff. But most importantly, help them keep coming. Thank you to everyone that supports me there. So let's go. We are making clothes, really. We are making uh, dresses for women and frocks for men. And we are renting them out so they can exhibit them at this grand ball. And also giving them out for money as well if we want to, but mainly prestige for the Grand Ball. We are f financing decorations so that we can get more income, we can double or triple the value of our dresses at the fireworks display, all sorts of stuff. Then the jewellery box expansion adds jewellery to go along with the dresses. Uh, we can train our staff to become better and better. And then the promo packs are different kinds of dresses that have their own bonuses and things. So how the game goes, there are seven rounds, and in each of these rounds we go through these phases. So the first phase is prepare for the new round. We don't need to do that in the first round of the game. We are all prepared. Then we need to pick our cards. We all would have, as, as actual players, we would have the same hand of starting cards, and for the round we need to pick three of those staff members to come in. There are different levels of staff member, and it's basically comes down to their experience and which actions they're allowed to do. We have apprentices, the bronze ones. They cannot do these three actions. They can't make clothes. These people wouldn't be seen dead wearing clothes made by an apprentice. We can't get the queen's favor as they in the same way. The, the queen does not want to see an apprentice. And we also cannot hire staff. The apprentice does not have the authority to hire staff. Uh, there is a journeyman, the silver one. They can do everything but hire staff. And then we have the master, the master, who can do anything he likes. So I need to pick three of these to go into the round with. And so I need to be thinking about what I want to do. I don't know what the the AI opponent for the solo game, Madame Du Barry, has her own deck that she it gets shuffled every round and she's going to have four cards out of it determining the action she's going to take. And she has certain rules. She gets a lot for free, of course. But I need to think about what I'm going to do. So in the garments that are available, we've had something from the new Expert Tailoring mini expansion. Uh, these dresses have special powers. So this dress, they, they can only be... Uh, rented out they can't be sold for money but they will give you a special bonus so this one will get you some jewelry if you're eligible to get jewelry so i want to be thinking about to be eligible to get jewelry i need to have a decoration on the jewelry board then to get this dress one of the fancy dress tiles has come out there's a fancy dress pro pack i've just thrown it all in here uh, that's because the fancy dress clothes are harder to make there are some extra garment tiles thrown into the bag that have more resources on them you can see what would usually be on a tile but there's three there that is a fantastic combination if i can get to do that now madame du barry is going to go first but i think i want to get some stuff i want to put a decoration down there and I want to get that dress. So it is a master dress. This golden thimble on here means these dresses can only be made by a master. So I'm definitely bringing one in. A master can also hire a new staff member, which means more options in the future, but also an extra action this round. And I think I, think I would like a journeyman to do the decoration as well and we'll, we'll see why we can do some training i think that's what i'm going to go for now, i don't need any lace or thread 
you can see above the requirements there, there's lace and thread on some things. They're the three cards I'm going to take in. So they're going to go on the top of my player board for now. And this is my draw deck. Next round, I have to take these two staff members in. Instead of choosing three hand cards, Madame Du Barry draws four random cards from her special deck. And then from those four actions, one at a time, she takes first player. We are going to do our actions. So her top card, she is going to gain the queen's favor. So when she does this, she takes the queen's favor if it's available. Uh, this is a, th There is a plus edition as well. You can see from uh, metal coins and things. There are different versions of the deluxe edition available with different things in them. Like I don't think the special thimble in the, the queen's... Uh, busted in there but she takes the queen's favor the queen's favor means you will be first player next round it also gets you five coins normally but madame barry doesn't have uh, she holds no truck with uh, money so she always gets three points which is what you would get if you had the queen's favor at the very end of the normal game she just gets three points no matter what so she is going to be on the board now with three points and then it's over to me and i can choose what i want to do so what do I like to do? This, this special apprentice over here is also part of the jewelry box expansion. This is an apprentice that you can hire later on with the hiring action, only done by a master. But you have to meet his requirements. His requirements are have 30 livre, 30 money. Then I'm allowed to hire him. And whenever he's played, he has a bonus, as most staff members have bonuses. His bonus is just get three points every time he's played. It's going to be a long journey towards 30 money, though, I think. So what would I like to get done first? Be the only thing that I'm really desperately bothered about, I don't really particularly mind which staff member I get yet, I mind about getting this. This is the only material out here with green on it. So I need to get that. And I would like the decoration out. So what I'm going to do is use my apprentice. His main action is going to be fund a decoration. When you do this, you can fund any decoration on the board. They have these special uh, flowery <laughs> decoration around them. Uh, the number in the yellow circle says how much that decoration costs to fund. And there are loads of different things that will get you. Different ways of getting points. There are decorations in each of the halls to help with your majority in them. Uh, the fireworks will double or triple the number of points a dress is worth at the end of the game. These can get you income. These can get you points based on how many different colors of dresses you've put out over the course of the game. But these over here give you access to buy jewelry. I am just going to fund the cheapest one right now. So that's going to cost me six money. So I get four back and I put one of my trademark tokens over that space to show that that's gone. I'm going to get a point at the end of the game. Most importantly, I'm allowed to buy jewelry now. You can only ever have one decoration on here. Uh, so I could have paid 10 for two points, but I think this is going to be better off. So also, in here, we are training our apprentices. Whenever you have an apprentice do one of these four tasks, they get some experience towards their examination. This is in the jewelry box expansion. Anything you see on this board is part of the jewelry box expansion. So whenever you have an apprentice do that task, I have had an apprentice fund a decoration. Yes, the examiner has seen you do that task and do it well. So that will be okay. The other tasks are buy resources uh, that are pink or blue, green or red, and uh, have lace or thread. Now, if you say if I bought this, I couldn't do both of these tasks with that one single action. You have to pick one of them. But if, as I'm about to do now, if your second thing, so if I'd chosen to get resources with my main action and then I get resources as the bonus action, I am allowed to do both of those things because that's two different actions. You just can't fulfill the same task with uh, just a single action. So I did a decoration and then the bonus of this particular apprentice, it's why I picked him, he can buy resources as a second action. You get one resource tile and the draw you take it from can determine the price. Basically, if the draw is full, as all of them are, the tile costs you two money. If there are only two pieces in it, it costs you one money. If it's the last piece left, it's free. So I am paying top dollar for this, but it's a very valuable piece, I think. Now, a lot of the resource tiles have the silks and they have either lace and or thread at the bottom. You have to choose which one you want. If you want the lace or thread, 
then you take that and you discard the tile. You don't get the silks. If you want the silks, however, you don't get the lace or thread. And the deluxe edition comes with these uh, resource racks that, the, that Madame du Barry doesn't need. So you slot that in there and hey presto, you can no longer see the lace or thread anymore to confuse you. It's there just for the silks. So I have that resource now. I might though, just for the sake of the static cameras, I might just put my resources out there because you're not going to see them standing up, are you? But there we go. I've, sh I've shown them off on the main camera so you can see how uh, things are when you're playing. So that's my hand. I've done that apprentice now. And the examiner has seen the apprentice purchasing silks. Now, there is a lot of blue and pink out there. So I'm going to say that he did red or green because there is a green on that piece. And yeah, red, red is definitely more unusual. Let's see what the madame is going to do. She is going to buy some resources and it shows you right here which resources she's going to take away. So she is taking these tiles away. Every two resource tiles she has at the end of the game, doesn't matter what was on them, every two tiles she has at the end of the game are worth a point for her. And she is also competing for, well, we're not competing really, she's also training her staff. She puts one of her tokens on the topmost get a resource space, doesn't matter which colour she took because you know, it's a bit random what's going to end up there, so she just gets it anyway. Over to me, and before Madame du Barry does a garment, I am going to tailor a garment. So what you need, this particular garment needs a master, that's fine. The space that it's in says how much extra you've got to pay for the design, so zero over here. Then I need to pay a blue, a pink, and a green silk, which I've got just from this tile, so that goes into a discard pile rather than back in the bag. Look at these lovely bags. So when I make this garment, because of its special power, because it's from the expert tailoring expansion, the new thing, if I have a decoration in jewelry, I'm allowed to take any jewelry piece. Now normally it must match the, the gender of the costume that you're making. If it's a dress, you're allowed to take a necklace. If it's a man's frock coat, you're allowed to take a ring that are pink and red and the Next is a green and blue. I'm going to choose, this would normally cost me seven money as well this round. I'm going to choose to take the blue because now this is going to get me a point at the end of the game. One money of income every single round. But if you match colors, then you are allowed to dip into, is white the right bag? Yes, you're allowed to dip in to the resource bag and get yourself a random resource tile. So I've got myself a red. Oh, that could be good. Maybe I won't hire anyone and I'll just put this. I could sell this for money and get 20 money out there. So you decide now, do you want the silk or do you want the lace? I want the silk. So that's going to stay out there. I didn't pay any money for this. I just paid my resource. So now I am renting the dress out. I'm going to put one of my tokens on it and I decide which hall it's going to go into. So a big part of scoring at the end of the game is majority in these halls. Whoever has put the most dresses, or has rented out the most dresses to people in these halls. And these spaces are the most prestigious because you can only go in there if you have made your dress with a master. Regardless of whether or not the dress had to be made by a master, if it was made by a master, you can put them in there. So the bonus is available, and th there are other spaces that can get you money. I could get five money from being in here, or I could just get myself any of these tokens. I could get myself a lace and a thread and not have to worry later on, although that is free if I wanted to do that with an action. Or I think I'm going to take five money because you've got some freedom, haven't you, when you've got uh, money. So I'm going to grab that. And so that space in there, it's, it's a bit more prestigious as well because if there is a tie in number of dresses in here, the tie is broken by whoever has put dresses in the most golden thimble spaces. If there is still a tie, it's whoever paid for the musician rather than a decoration in the halls. It's a musician, but it's still considered a decoration for the purposes of the action name. There is no bonus with a starting master. So that is just it for my turn. Madame du Barry is tailoring a dress. So the card here is going to tell us which dress she is going to take. She is going to take the one, one space from the right. So it's going to be this one at no cost. Then we draw another card from her display. 
to determine the bottom of this is going to tell us where to put the dress and if she gets any jewellery. She hasn't got a decoration in jewellery because she hasn't funded a decoration yet. So we can ignore that. But she is going to put it in the main hall, the hall with the king. And if possible, she will put it in a place with a thimble. And then after that is uh, with the best bonus and everything. In this hall, there are, there are no special bonuses for taking the golden thimble spaces. But there we go. She's put a very good dress out there. Oh, whoops. I actually... You're supposed to get a card from her card supply, not her hand card. So let's give her a new mystery card in her hand. That's actually benefited her because she can't take the queen's favor again. So do I want to put that red dress out? I have the red material and the thread that I need. It would cost me three money. I can afford that. I wouldn't be hiring a new staff member, though, with the bonuses that they bring. Maybe I would want to hire an apprentice and do another decoration. But I'd probably want to get resources, wouldn't I? so that I can help with their examination. Now I'm going to go I'm going to go dressmaking crazy in this first round. So with a master that's going to cost me 3 money because of the position it's in has to be made with a master otherwise I would have hired maybe a journeyman and then made it with them instead. So I need a thread and a red. And do I want to buy some jewelry? There is no red rings out there, which would be great because then I could uh, get another piece another resource randomly from the bag, but I am going to pay 4 for a pink ring, which they will wear that, but it's not quite as stylish, so I don't get the free resource, but that's another point at the end of the game and has increased my income. So let's put this dress out. And where would I like to go? It's another golden thimble. Do I want to compete in this main hall? There's no bonus up for grabs here. It is six points for the majority in this hall. Or do I want a free resource? Or over in this hall for money. We can always compete over there later. Yeah, I'm going to go for four money. Oh, I could, I could have even. I was thinking about renting this out, wasn't I? Because it would be twenty money. It is worth four points, though. I'm going to put it out and get my four money, because what I can do later on is, if I can afford to fund the one fireworks space up there for twenty-two money. That will triple the value of one of my dresses, and I would, of course, choose the four-pointer over there. So that could be worth 12 points to me at the end of the game. That could be really good. Again, no bonus from a starting master, so we can move back to Madame Dubarry's final action. And what's she going to do? She is going to tailor a dress again. So it's going to be the third one from the right. You count dresses, not empty spaces, so one, two, three. And then where's she going to put it? She is going to put it in the bottom left. No jewellery, whether she had it or not. So she will put it on a thimble space and put her token on it. So she is competing with me in this hall. We've played all our actions, so we can move on to the gain income phase. And Madame Dubarry doesn't care about that. Uh, I get five money and also any money from decorations I might have. Uh, these would give you a decoration in here. You can only have one in each of these places. Decoration in here gives you a money for every decoration you've done. And decoration in here gives you money for every dress that you've put out. I don't have any decorations there though, so I will get five plus one each for my jewelry. I will get seven livre. Finally, we need to set up for the new round. So any employee cards that weren't hired go away and four new ones will come out. The highest round number that you can see will, which will be over here, will be the round number until the very last round. You know it's the last round because there isn't a deck anymore. And it's going to reveal a special guest at the party. Uh, any dresses that are here get removed and you slide everything along and fill it up. You don't discard these and you just fill them back up. And if there's a jewellery there, it gets discarded, slid along, filled back up. First player also passes to the person with the Queen's favour. That is already Madame Dubarry, so she keeps her first player in us. But we take all of her cards, shuffle them up again. Okay, we are good to go, I think. I have given Madame Dubarry her four cards. It's time for me to pick my three. Well, two of them have to come from there. And that kind of tells me I want my next one to be a master. I don't really want to go into the round without a master. Although if I went into the round with two apprentices, one could get a resource tile, and then as a bonus, get another resource tile, and the other could go and do the exam. I could afford to do that, and then I would be turning one of my apprentices into a journeyman in round two, and I would have my pick of the bonuses. 
I think I'm happy to wait though. I'm going to go in with those three. So to start the round proper, we have Madame Du Barry's first card, which is going to be hire a staff member. So it's going to be the second one from the right, it's going to be this master. Uh, when so this employee goes into her deck she has her starting cards that she would have had anyway but she doesn't use them for anything this is just for end game scoring because some cards concern how many staff members you have she also gets an extra card in here to represent as with a normal player she's going to have an extra action this round over to me and nothing really jumps out as something i'm desperate to do we do have this dress here but i would have to get two blue and then i would have to get something else to get the thread that i need yeah a lot needs thread doesn't it there's this i've got the lace but i would need to get a green and then a pink yeah, i'm not sure if this is going to be a dressmaking round i'm going to hire a staff member so i'm going to use my master it's the only level of staff that can do it and i come over here so similarly with the resources if the if no one's hired anything yet it's five to hire at the moment it's going to be three and then it goes down to one and then even zero if there's only one staff member left here i am tempted to just hire another master so i could do a master action with him it's going to cost me three he gets a bonus though because he's not a starting master of earning you a money which isn't a lot is it <laughs> it's something the others would be pay a journeyman and pay one to get a random resource from the bag and this journeyman rewards you with money as a bonus but you get more money the fewer staff members you have in your deck there is an action we haven't seen yet, which is depute your staff member. You basically remove them from the game and get this amount of money for them. And you still get their bonus one last time. So I'm going to hire this master. So he goes into my hand. So an extra action here. And I need to pay my three libra for him. Madame Dubarry is up again and she is going to grab some resources. She's going to grab all three resources from the middle section. Okay, so better not be thinking about anything involving green. And she hasn't made anything cheaper as well doing that. Okay, actually, I might be able to do this. I can, I can grab the materials, then get the lace, then make the blue dress. It's very tempting to just go and fund decorations, get, get money and start funding some decorations, really. It is nice to be represented in all the halls as quickly as possible. Let's, let's see how we go on with that, though. I, I could get the materials and the thread in one go, but I would rather get the materials with my apprentice so that it's another task towards the four for the examination. So we're probably not going to be able to do the examination next round either. Uh, so let's let's get the resources. It's going to be blue. It's cost me two because it's full, but his bonuses get two. So I'm just going to call it quits there. And then I need to put a trademark token on get some blue materials. Madame Dubarry is going to hire a staff member, the rightmost one. And so it's going to get another action. And you can do that, you know, I could have just hired another staff member straight away. But if I am making this, I'm not going to be able to do that. Unless I want to get some more blue, and then another lace, and then pay three to do this one. That seems a bit of a waste when I could just do a master. It's just I could get this staff member for free that gets me a random, uh, a random tile. And it is good to have a load of staff later. There is an endgame points card that gets you points for how many cards you've got. There is a, a card where the bonuses get more money for the more cards that you've got. I've not really been hiring, have I? I've been getting dresses out. And the cards do get better and better as you go on because you, you're going to have less chance to use them, aren't you? I think let's stick with this, though. So I need, I need no money for that. I need seven if I'm going to go for matching stuff so i don't have money for a decoration i don't actually have any spare money whatsoever so i don't actually get, know what i'm going to do with my journeyman i could depute him for seven it seems a bit of a waste although we could we could be getting a bonus from somewhere couldn't we and it's just i would like to make the dress yeah you know, i'm doing it in a non-ideal order I could. What, what are my cards for next turn? I, it's my only journeyman. Although I, when I train the apprentice, it becomes a journeyman and has a different bonus. So if we're going in another thimble space, I can get a random resource, but I won't have a staff member to make anything with. Because first of all, I need 
to get the thread with the bonus comes after the main action. Oh, something that's come out, we have a fancy dress one there that's got uh, red and pink and a lace to make. And it's worth five points and uh, 26 for renting that out. Uh, this is a festive dress. So originally in the advent calendar for the, the original Rococo, this will give you a point for every blue dress that you have put out at the time of making this dress. So it would get me one. Not great, is it? So what do we do? Do we depute him? My only journeyman. But I can get, I can hire more when they come out. It's a really nice bonus as well to have. It's just I can't really think of another... Oh, I could get the Queen's favour, couldn't I? And, and go first and get five money. It's better than just getting seven for him, isn't it? Yeah, let's get the Queen's favour. I can do that with a journeyman, and then I'll spend one to get myself a thread. And then really cross my fingers that Madame Dubarry doesn't uh, make that dress. So that's him done. Madame is making a dress, but it's the fifth one from the right. And uh, we can see where it's going to go in a sec. So it is one, two, three, four, five. This one. Oh, the other one I was thinking about making. And it's going to go in the bottom right. Goes in a thimble space. That's... No, actually, I wouldn't go there because I'm already in that hall. Because there is a bonus up for grabs. The first person to be in all the halls gets six points at the end of the game. It's worth noting as well that in a two-player game, which this technically is, there are no points for second place in any of the halls or the fireworks. So it's my final action already, and it's going to be to make this dress. And that's going to require... Let's actually look at the right side first. It's going to need two blue and a thread. No extra money to be spent making it. I'm making it with a master, which is okay. Uh, and I could hire it out for 17 cash. But no, let's. we're not in the main hall either, are we? There's a couple more halls to get out there. Uh, I'm going to go over here, though, just because it's going to get me some materials. I am tempted by the red and blue together. Blue and a pink would be good for this one. Not so good for money. And I already have the lace, and it would be a lot cheaper next round. It would be at least... Maybe Madame Dubarry's going to make some of these. It would only cost, like, one at the moment. Or do we go for the red? That's always worth more points, because I have the lace for that as well. Neither of them need a master, which is good. Or do we just go for lace and thread? So we've got that kind of built in and ready. I'm going to go for red, because red is worth more points. And I'm going to have it for its silk rather than its stuff. Oh, and we need to pay, uh, what is it, seven? So that we can get another blue necklace. And that is going to give me a random resource from the bag, which I might have gotten first, actually. Uh, I've got no choice of what to do, though, so that's a lace and a thread. And the bonus for my master is get one money. Okay, so we're in three out of five halls. What is Madame Boudoubarry going to do? She's going to hire another staff member uh, and get another card. Then I'm, I'm done. I've got no more cards. She's going to make a dress, the second one along. Oh, dear. It's going to be down here again, so she will go in the thimble space. So she will break ties over here. It's only a four-point haul, though. And she's, she's not eligible, eligible for jewellery, which is a plus. And then her final action is hire a staff member. She can't, so she'll get three points. So that puts her on six to my zero. And so I think we're at the end of the round now. Income is five, six, seven, eight for me. Would like to get a decoration out and start boosting that. And I will do all of the usual stuff to get us into round three. I'm going to stop this part here. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the game. And you can see who is the best at arranging an elaborate ball. If you'd like to join me for that, it's in the description now or on the screen very shortly. If you'd like to go straight to what I think about this new edition of Rococo. And actually, I never, I didn't used to do first impressions videos when I did the original playthrough. So get the first scoop on what I think about Rococo. Uh, that'll be linked similarly. And if you'd like to help me keep making more playthroughs, again, it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Thank you very much for watching, though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.